For today's Grim Adventure, we have a little bit of a different video for you guys. We are in Hollywood, California, and we have some friends in from Germany, and they are filming a documentary on Vincent Price, and we are a part of it. We're gonna be meeting up with Mick Garris and John Landa sitting, sitting in on their interviews and hopefully getting some things signed. And of course, you guys are coming with us. Hi guys, how are you doing? It's me, Laurent from Wicked Vision, a German label who does media books, DVDs and releasing movies. So we are here at the place of Jim Kunz with we. I mean, my boss Daniel and I are here in Los Angeles. We came all the way from Germany. And what are we doing here? Well, we make a documentary about Vincent Price called The Vincent Price Legacy. As you know, there are not many Vincent Price documentaries out there. And we thought it would be great to have a documentary where we relate his personal life to his movies. So, it never have been before. We asked permission at Vic for Victoria to do this. She agreed, she gave green light, she loved it. And let's see what happens. Today, we got McGarris and John Landis. We got many, many, many more people. Even the Grim Life Collective are in this movie. So, I'm happy to do it. If you like it, please let me know. If you don't like it, please let me know also. I'm fine with that, I love it. And see you guys down the road, bye. I'm going to be back here out of his eye line, and then you guys can just basically position yourselves wherever you want over there. One time working with experts is something amazing. Seriously, never had it if before. Poor guy. Yeah. We'll never have it. <laughs> and then uh, suddenly she fell over me. Ah! And kissed me and everything. It was what was that? Crazy. Uh, Saturday here in, in the Whiskey Logo, it happens to me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Sounds like we're Saturday at the Whiskey. Yeah. yeah. He was like, it's awesome. Now I can't even fly. Didn't do that. He's like, I, I was looking at this poor little girl's face and I had to call her a bitch. <laughs> no, he has it. Ready. It's so good. <laughs> you guys all set? I'm set. Are you set? I'm ready. This one sounds great. All right, here we are. Camera speeds. And seriously, much respect. We've, like, no, agree, we've seen each no, other a couple yeah, different I, times yeah, at different events. Yeah, so. Times per day, they only get, you know, yeah. instead of getting six. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Shit, I'm crying. Yeah. 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 I know it seems a little much, but we're like, yeah. we're never, never, never going to have this opportunity again. Oh, I'm happy, happy to do it. Thank you so much. It's getting reappraised. That's shining. It's just it gets like a it's like a wine. That's the one that people love it more and more the further it gets. I hope so. I mean, it was really successful. Yeah. But every well, every you, Kubrick fan was you had, nasty as fuck. And nobody it. knew that they did the right. He said, "I don't care what it is. I'm going the opposite. If it's in the summer, it's in the winter. If it's right. right. He changed yeah. it so much that you're just like, I'm going for the source material. Yeah, and well, the, and. It, I was lucky enough to have Stephen King write the script, mm -hmm. so that helped. But I definitely see more people, they think they read the book, but they seem to be loving it a lot more these days. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been getting some respect. I mean, the people who didn't see the movie first appreciate ours. Yeah. I saw yours first. Really? The Shining. Yeah, I saw Did it before the, the book first? No, I read hey. the book afterwards. Ah. And I did it like Joey and friends, you know. I put it in the freezer when it was true. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the chills, no. Kidding. <laughs> but uh, it's awesome, I love it. Still to this day, I love it. Yeah. 
Thank you. I got even something too here. Oh. It's a German oh, post wow. of Cycle 4. Cycle 4. Oh. To you? Yeah, of course. If you can sign with my name on it. His sure. name is Highest Bidder. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> To Demogorgon 78. See, Kenan Norman Bates, you know Norman Bates, yeah. gets this. Now is the time that mother, that you get to know mother? Yeah. Uh, All right. You speak German fluently. That, the Great. last, I studied two years of high school German. That was 50 years ago. That's the only German I've ever had. <laughs> But you're good in it, man. Well, I, this. <laughs> Make believe me, I had an F in English in school every year. Well, you certainly overcame that. Yeah, right? You're killing it. Tell us the teachers. <laughs> what did you say? Legacy? There's one you said a G on. I was remembering when you were talking. I loved it. I cannot remember. I said a, a, a legacy? A G? Legis legacy? There's one legacy. word. I said legacy, yeah. Nobody. I love that this is your bed. Right? It's a legacy, right? It, it's like, it's great because we go to like all these different like, horror conventions and we sit there and yeah. sign. Yeah. And it's just Hello Kitty everywhere. Yeah. Hello Kitty. Now you <laughs> need a back of My Little Pony backpack. Right? <laughs> Care Bears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we so afraid to Liebe Visionäre, willkommen aus L.A. Wir hatten ja gestern gesagt, dass wir eine schöne Ankündigung für euch haben. Ein sehr großes Projekt, wo wir schon länger dran arbeiten. Und ja, schaut mal, wen wir alles hier haben. Ah, good Abend. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Mick Garris. Sorry, for now you speak in English and I speak in German. That's okay, that's, right. that's that's perfect. Right. Let's do that. Um, we are here with Mick Garris and we are doing a documentary about Vincent Price called the Vincent Price Legacy. And one of our guests is Mick Garris. So thank you so much for being on this project. Uh, it's so much fun to to give tribute to one of the great icons of horror cinema. Thank you so much, Mick. And um, guys, look out, it's coming out when we are releasing the new movies of Vincent Price, which we got a bunch of now. We bought some. And even Michael and Jessica from the Grim Life Collective are Hello. there too. Hello. And the one and only person who is filming everything is Jim Kunz. The amazing Jim Kunz. Great to meet hey. these guys finally. We've been working together a long time. All right. So, see you on the road. We see us in Germany. Wir sehen uns. Also, bis bald. Wiedersehen. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> John Landis is here. He's out there getting a tour of the studio. And I just heard his voice and said goosebumps. Freaking heckins. I am geeking out a little bit. Screw it. Geeking out a lot. Sitting for 12 hours. After 5 hours, you don't feel any pain. It's Hello. I left Hello. you a death trap to get through here. Yes, you did. Let me, of course, I did. let me. I saw Michael and Jessica. And they nice do, meeting you. Um, Hello. They... Oh. Well. Oh, you want me to move here? No. You want me in it too? Yeah, I was going to be in it too. You want me in it too? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we are. Yes. But I, this is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be about an American werewolf in London. One, one question. question. Just one question. And it's a uh, one question. And it's it's a bit of a doozy. Um, looking back on American Werewolf in London, the first thing that comes to mind, like, I can't believe I was a part of making that. Like, I can't believe you I was there. You no, not me, you. You weren't there. <laughs> I could believe it. What do you mean, that I would? Yeah. That's I, hard. No, I believe it. I, I wrote it, I produced it, I directed it. I was there. Well, I mean, looking back, if you were to pick one memory from that, your favorite time working on American Werewolf in London, what was it? Well, for filmmakers, you always got to remember it, it's, it's different. You have two things. You have the memory of making the film and then the finished film. So sometimes the making of the film can be miserable, but the finished film's terrific. <laughs> And vice versa. I've worked on movies where everybody loved each other and it was wonderful. And the movie comes out and it stinks. You know, so you never know. Movies are alchemy. So you're never sure of how they're going to come out. But making an American Werewolf in London was a big pleasure for me because we made it by a process called negative pickup. 
because all the studios turned it down. And because we said, we want $10 million. If you give us $10 million, we'll give you this movie. Do you know how negative pickup works? I, I, do, I do not. It's a wonderful way to make movies and they don't do it anymore. But it, it's, it's the filmmaker takes all the risk. And because he's taking all the risk, he has tremendous, not only responsibilities, but freedom. So we made a negative pickup deal with a Dutch company called Polygram. And so the deal is, here's the screenplay. I'm going to make a movie out of this screenplay. And it's going to be no less than 90 minutes and no more than 120 minutes. And it's going to be on 35 millimeter. You make all these conditions and requirements. It's going to be in English. It won't be more than an R rating. You know, you have all these terms. And when I make this movie it's, and finish it, I will hand it to you and you will give me $10 million. So they have no risk. Right. So what the filmmaker does is he then goes to a company, there are several, but Film Finance is the most famous, and you buy a bond, which is like an insurance policy. And it's very expensive, and it comes out of the budget. And once you have that, you go to a bank. Uh, American Wharf is British, so we went to a British bank. And we say, uh, loan us $10 million. <laughs> give us $10 million. Right. Based on, and we have a bond. So they give you the $10 million. They loan you the $10 million. And you make the movie. And then you finish the movie, you hand it over, and they give you $10 million. And you pay the bank off its interest. And he made the movie. So what that means is that I was signing the checks. So my partner and I, who made the movie, George Folsey, we were in charge. Of everything. Uh, yeah, everything. So what was wonderful is I, I didn't have to fight with anybody. I didn't have to ask for permission. You know, I just, it would be like, John, could I please have a Chapman Crane? for the sequence on Thursday. Yes, John, you can, you know, because right? it was just me. So that was a pleasure. That was the easiest movie I ever made. Like, so, there's so many people that have made the pilgrimage to the sites. And this Halloween, my wife I and I that, were uh, going out there to do the same thing. Really? Yeah. A lot of the sites have changed, a lot of them. But the Black Mountains in Wales look exactly yeah. the same. Um, which is, first of all, which is your personal favorite Vincent Price movie? Oh, that's easy. Um, Vincent Price made a lot of movies. I mean, he's in many movies. And a lot of them are not very good. Um, he suffered the same thing as, you know, Christopher Lee or Peter Cushing or even Boris Karloff, which is once they became identified as horror stars, the quality of the movies sort of, you know, went away. But they were always good, <laughs> no matter what. But a wonderful movie that I think is an excellent film is, oh God, Theater of Blood. That's my favorite Vincent Price movie because, one, he gets a chance to play all those Shakespearean scenes um, and play all those characters, and he plays this ham actor. And Price was kind of a Victorian theater kind of, you know, theatrical actor. And the screenplay is so funny and so smart. And it's got a brilliant cast. I mean, Harry Andrews and Diana Rigg and Coral Brown. I mean, just remarkable supporting cast. And it's a very funny, dark horror film about actors and critics. And I like that movie very much. And it's also terribly clever in terms of the way that the Shakespearean scenes are done. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very smart. I love it, or is it Merchant of Venice, where he's Shylock, and he cuts with a knife, he carves out of that guy's belly. He lifts out the gore, puts it on a scale, because it's a pound. <laughs> and then he looks, 
And he takes a knife and cuts off a little piece and throws it away. So it's exactly a pound. But there are very funny things in that. And he's great. He's just great. He's perfect. Well, as I was born in 1950, which means I literally grew up with television. And so, so many movies I saw on television in black and white. Even now I'll see a movie and I'll go, oh, it's in color. <laughs> but, uh, so I probably saw Vincent Price movies in black and white first. Um, and I think, believe it or not, because he's not really the star, but I think The Fly is the first movie I'm, I'm aware of Vincent Price. It has moments of genuine creepiness and the ending when Herbert Marshall and Vincent Price comes and his little boy and the, the there's a a fly caught in a spider web and it's David Hedison, all, his head is on the body of a fly, it's all shriveled and this spider is coming to eat him and he's going, help me! As a child, that scared the shit out of me. And I remember, is it Vincent Price or Herbert Marshall? One of them takes a rock and crushes them. The Tingler, I love the Tingler. The Tingler is in this theater! You know, they show it crawling the big, across the lens of the projector so it's big shadow. It was that fear is an actual physical thing in the base of your neck that kind of looks like a centipede that gets larger and larger until it kills you. It can kill you unless you scream. So when the scientist, when Vincent Price takes it out, I think it's in shadow, but he has like a forceps and he pulls out this giant bug. Really stupid, but as a kid, it was like <gasps> really scary. Grim like Grim Fairy. Exactly. Grim Life Collective. Oh, right? Told you it was long. <laughs> Focused on the books, you know, it's making a mess, you know. <laughs> Not yeah. kidding. Eugenio did it. He did uh, videos for oh, us. No. And, and uh, also, also he um, Ted said to me, well, no, this is art. And I said, like, you know, I, I, I'm paying for this. This is, this is not art. You, you're filling his nose hole. With and his who's this one? Us this as well. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do with this? No, the, we're, we, we collect laser discs, so we have a, a collection in our home office. We have a big YouTube channel as well, with lots of just big horror yeah. films. Yeah. Every time I look, it's another. So here's our An American Werewolf in London poster. The Grim Life Collective, Stay on the Road, John Landis. And we also had this printed. Got Mick Garris and John Landis to sign this. John wrote, Boo. And then, of course... Jessica and I have a killer laser disc collection, and here's our copy of the movie. He signed that as well. Man, that's, that's blown, mind blown. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 